there's all these opportunities now that I think uh, it, it's time to seize upon and we just need to broaden our thinking a little bit uh, and make things just a, a little bit more accessible so we can tell the success stories of, of Irish business. Okay. What if you had the opportunity to have a coffee with your eight-year-old self? What advice would you offer? And would you actually take the advice and offer? I'm absolutely fascinated by that question. I interview people from all walks of life, from Heineken Cup winners, New York Times bestselling authors, polar explorers, you name them, I've interviewed them. Be inspired, learn and grow from the experience of others. Welcome to the What I Know Now podcast with Mark Kelly. Today's guest is James McCann, founder and MD at A Clear Story Ireland. James is the former PR at Comms and Web Summit. Welcome to Web What I Know Now. How you doing, Mark? You well? I'm really, really good. Tell me about your journey to now, James. Yeah, so I, I've had a, a bit of a meandering road to, to, to where I am now. I suppose when I when I left school, my focus was um, on, on being a, a soldier. So uh, I ended up going into the army to begin with. Um, I didn't, uh, didn't stay too long there. I moved on kind of fairly quickly after about uh, three years and uh, started a, a different career path that's kind of you know led me to here so public relations was always fascinating to me from when like my early 20s uh, and I suppose my first kind of experience with it practically was when I, I suppose, started getting involved in, in, in politics got involved in a lot of community work uh, as part of that so I was uh, involved in a, an awful lot of kind of lobbying efforts locally for you know everything from you know um, elderly care to uh, derelict sites uh, that that would have involved just kind of you know drafting up press releases sending it into uh, you know local newspapers uh, and just seeing the print and it's it's kind of fascinating when you know I didn't have any kind of uh, educational background in it or any other kind of pra- uh, practical kind of background but yes I was I was seeing uh, my actions you know in front of me uh, and people were talking about those things and you know and it was just a really fascinating insight into how to affect change but but also just to kick off that shatter factor you know and bring things to light that maybe other people didn't know so i i done that for for quite a long time uh, i think my biggest kind of uh, success was um i think back in you know maybe five or so so years ago dur- during actually the the, the recession uh, the government were, were cutting a, a particular fund that i was involved uh, in running in in my own uh, area it was uh, one of the, the the senior alert scheme for for the elderly basically payment alarms and the government were cutting that by by a million and a half and again just from my experience previously you know i launched a campaign and uh, within 24 hours um it was all over obviously kind of rt1 news i was on joe duffy it was on the whole lot and uh, the the cut got reversed so that to me was an absolute kind of insight into into what can be done at the right you know true public relations fantastic example yeah. of influence yeah 100 percent. yeah so um obviously then i, I kind of went on from that I, I ran for election there in the last local elections in 20, uh, 2014 I, I didn't make it but uh look you know uh, I, I think fa- failure is a subjective word uh when it comes to politics but uh, and after that, you know, I, I, I kind of landed a job at Web Summit, uh, which, which I think in my mind has been has been life changing, and and in, in terms of uh, my experience, public relations wise and communications wise, uh, it opened up a, a whole different way of thinking, uh, a whole different way of uh, viewing the world. So, like that, that experience was, was was fantastic. So to go from being in the army to mm. politics. Yeah, to the say a meandering talk, road. Talk about different <laughs> changes. Uh, just in a, quickly, what made you want to get into the army? Um, so it was something that you know when I like I think it was around twelve, uh, and I got it into my head that that was something I wanted to do. I used to read uh, a lot of kind of military history at the time, like you know, which I, I think is a bad influence on uh, young teenage minds. You know, you're, you're reading about all these you know kind of war stories, and you're like, oh, that that sounds great, uh, but it really isn't. <laughs> but uh, I, I suppose. Um, I, I kind of romanticised it in my own head uh, when I was a lot younger and I remember I used to go into my career guidance counsellor uh, and every time I go in I'd just say just give me the leaflet please um, about the, the defence forces yeah. you know so I never actually explored any other avenue than you know going into the army uh, and, and when I got there I suppose it wasn't that romantic vision there was yeah. a lot of people shouting at me uh, all the time I was like what what is this but uh, no it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a great uh, was it was great three years. you learn from this from oh god yeah absolutely i think in life in general you know we 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 have unexpected challenges hitting us you know the whole time 
you know, to, to do something kind of uh, like going into the army and doing the training and all that kind of stuff when you're so young, uh, I think it helps prepare you for the unexpected in adulthood. So I suppose it teaches you not to panic. It teaches you discipline and, and hard work. It teaches you the value of friendship and, and teamwork. And I, I suppose it, it basically laid the building blocks uh, of what I you know, feel has contributed to my success now in that it gives you the, the, the courage to jump when you, when you have to. I remember watching a video that Simon Sinek had about how these cadets were literally putting themselves uh, in harm's way to go back and get yeah. their other soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he said, these people are not better than anybody else, mm. but they are so bought into what they do that yeah. they'll put their life on yeah, risk. Yeah. And it's not that they don't love their family, they yeah. love their family just as much as we do, yeah, yeah, but they're so bought into that mm. camaraderie and spirituality yeah. of the army that it's yeah. incredible. I just think it's yeah, it's yeah. Like we, we like uh, during my recruit training, we had a, a pl- platoon sergeant, and his his motto was uh, a platoon <coughs> can only move as fast as its slowest man. Yeah. Uh, and and the, and the lesson there really is that you know it doesn't matter what you're doing as a team, you're all in it together. And unless you help people who aren't performing well and bring them up to scratch, well then as a as a team, as a company, as a whole. You, you won't progress as, as quickly. So it's in everyone's best interest to help everybody else out. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lesson that, that, that I never forgot. Uh, you know, we used to run 10Ks, 10 kilometer runs, with, you know, 40 kilo backpacks. And every time there was always going to be somebody who was going to struggle because of maybe injury or, you know, just exhaustion in some cases. You're, you're, you're you know, up at, you know, uh, half five in the morning most mornings. You're not going to bed till midnight. So, so it's always going to happen where, People struggle. Everyone has to be aware of that, and, and you know it's part of teamwork. Yeah. Make sure that you know the platoon even turns around, collects that person, and, and you move on together. You the, carry them with you. The discipline part of that just really excites me. I just yeah. love the the when you go to sleep each night, you are tired, and you will have yeah. no issue sleeping. I just think that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the web summit, it's going to be so successful. Mm. Everybody will will know it. Yeah. And um, how did it go grow from humble beginnings to become so successful? Um, well, I I think you know it's 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 an Irish success story, right? It's so popular because I think it was the first time ever you were you were seeing these massive corporate names like tech corporate names like uh, the CEO of Skype at the time, um, you know Twitter, Uber, all coming to Ireland and taking an interest in us. Now, you know, obviously we, we, we kind of had the Facebooks and the links and sending jobs here, but we never had the actual execs coming to share their insights with us. So it was the first time, I think, uh, that people could, could get that level of, of, of access and listen to these talks and meet these people. I think that was part of the element. So, so when I look back at you know, what Paddy was doing in, in 2010 and 2011, uh, bringing these guys on the Late Late Show and having them share you know, um, their journey with, with the Irish people directly, I think contributed massively to, um, to the success of, of the event in the long term. Because it positioned the conference as, as, as you know, a global hub for, for technology in what is now known, I suppose, internationally as, as the European hub of technology, which is, which is Ireland. You're using your, your strengths and, and you're broadcasting those and, and you're attracting people as a result. So that contributed to it. Um, and then all, and just, you know, like I, I've, over the last two years, I, I've worked with amazing people. And, you know, the, the vast majority are Irish um, and the vast majority didn't work in, in that space before. Uh, they maybe worked on radio or they, they, they work across different industries. And here they are now working for the, this event company that is, you know, bringing together some of the, 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 the biggest names uh, in the world to, to, to their event. And it, it's, it's fascinating to see that because uh, and I, I suppose it's what inspired me now to, to kind of take, take the next step. Be, because you know, there's there's no there's no book, you know, there's no instruction manual on how you do any of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's literally you're kind of learning the whole time. You're saying, well, why don't we try that? And why don't we try this? And it's that kind of typical kind of startup atmosphere where you have a problem. You, like everyone has, like the, the, there's a massive problem presenting itself, and that how do you attract, you know, say uh, um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt to an event or, or Al Gore or. And it's, it's the whole team, so whether it be design, whether it be the, the media team or, or the speaker team, it, it's how, how do you best position the event to attract these people. So that would be my next question then, how, yeah. do, how do you do that? You know, I think you have to look at it from the perspective of the person that you're trying to attract. What is it that uh, they value? Um, I mean, what, what's their agenda? What do they want out of it? So I suppose when, when you're asking, like, you know, how do you, how do you attract 
uh, th th these people. You're really trying to create uh, an environment where you can you, you can appeal to their needs, and and that takes a lot of people. So you know to to be able to produce an event at that scale to produce those results, um, and and they're doing an amazing job at the, at the moment with that. Uh, so you're, so you're, you're walking Gary Vaynerchuk out onto yeah. the stage, yeah, right? Yeah. And everybody who knows uh, Gary is is a pretty big deal. Mm. What makes you then want to go out by yourself and make that leap? Yeah, because it yeah. seems to be a pretty cosy place with yeah, well, shoulders with different types of for people, sure, right? For sure, and you're, you're meeting very interesting people the whole time. So over the last couple of web summits, and, and even when I was out in Asia with uh, with the, 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 the Rise Conference, you're, you're you're mixing with all these with these people. And you, you're you're sitting down, you're having lunch with them. I had lunch with Chris Froome. Um, you know, had good conversations with Rio Ferdinand, with Joseph Gordon Levitt as well, and it's great, right? But I suppose in my mind, they're not my relationships in that. It's great to rub shoulders with these guys, but that, that's all you're doing. So from, from, from my perspective, um, I wanted to build you know, my own company and have that be mine. And maybe in the future, uh, I can go to these events and you know, I might have reason to sit down with these guys in a formal setting and say, well, look, this is what I'm doing. I'd love to you know, see if we could work together. And then you're building an actual relationship, you know, a professional you know, relationship. It, it's a great buzz being involved and being at the epicenter of it all. But it didn't feel tangible to me. You right, know? Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose, given my political background, uh, you like all of your relationships to be tangible, to be, you know, you, you need to know people's names. You need to make sure they know you. And when, when there's, a, you know, so many people that you're meeting at these events, it's harder to, you know, it's, it's hard to make those solid connections. Right, so to have more meaningful, meaningful, meaningful relationships. Exactly, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can have a lot of transactional relationships. For sure, for sure. So that kind of fits into your new your new uh, mm. business. Tell us a little bit about that. I suppose Clear Story is uh, a culmination of my experience over the last couple of years. So, you know, I suppose when, when I was uh, out in, in, in the political sphere, meeting a lot of small business owners who had like really fascinating stories about how they came about. So, you know, even, you know, the, the, the local butcher, let's say, uh, would have had a story about the, how they learned their, 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 their skill set from, from their, their parents, uh, how the business had been operating for, for 30, 40 years, how, you know, they, they had, you know, so many unique factors to, to how they, you know, prepared things and la la la. It's, it's, it's kind of that thing of like, everybody has an interesting story, maybe not all of it is newsworthy, but even how they market themselves, you know, there's a lot of missed opportunity, uh, and 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 by by missing that opportunity, they're, they're leaving money, you know, on the on the table, as they say, right? And then on the other on the other side, uh, other end of that spectrum, you're meeting the the PR people for celebrities, uh, for massive corporations. Uh, you're meeting, you know, agencies uh, that are you know working in collaboration with these people, and the principles between, I suppose, telling one story for for the butcher. And telling it for a corporate, it, it, it's, it's bigger in terms of scale, but the principles remain the same, right? I've often found that there's only a small portion of, of companies in Ireland that can afford professional services to, to be able to, to do that, to, to be able to, you know, um, access, you know, kind of branding services, marketing services, public relations services. And I kind of just want to, to open that up a little bit. I want to try and, and make... You know, professional services in Ireland and now, I suppose, kind of internationally. Um, like I'm speaking to companies out in Thailand at the moment, in Singapore, in Hong Kong. Uh, they were all interested in the concept when I was out there um, uh, last month. And uh, yeah, I just want to make that accessible for a wider market. There's there's a missed opportunity for us to promote Irish businesses. Yeah, so you're giving you're, you giving, know, you're giving access to small businesses that wouldn't necessarily have got that yeah. because you're trying to give affordable good PR yeah, to, exactly. to allow yeah, people yeah, yeah. to get that access and yeah. share their story. A hundred percent, yeah. And what kind of core principles, maybe two or three pieces of advice would you say to a, a business who's starting out and wants mm. to kind of get that name out there? First of all, know your positioning. Who are your customers? What do they care about? Uh, are you identifying with them? Uh, so if it's a case that Again, you're, you're you're the local butcher. You know who are your customers are. Are they just locals, um, or you know do, do do they value kind of organic meat? Do they value, I suppose, locally produced food? Uh, so so what is it that they value, and are you <coughs> are, are are you showing them showing them that? So so that's the first thing. Uh, I suppose the second thing is if you have a really good story about where your business has come from, or something that you're doing, or like tell it. 
uh, it's not that you know difficult. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the the, the clients that I would, I'd sit down with, they're telling me about their passions and you know what they want to deliver for customers and where they came from. And I'm, I, I've yet to, to turn around and say you know oh like that's that's not a story. That's you know you know like they're, they're fascinating. You know, and, and these are the small business owners that represent ninety nine percent of all companies in Ireland, yeah, right? The reality is, is they don't get the limelight. They don't like, get the limelight. Like the big boys, That's 100%, right? The big right? boys get the red carpet. They get the whole they lot. Get, oh my God, let's get you into a room. Yeah, da, da, yeah, da, yeah. Press yeah. announcements. Yeah. Rather than small businesses, yeah. usually don't get the tax incentives. No, not get, at all. Don't get the and, and, and also, you take, know... They take more of the risk. They do. And, 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 and generally when, you know, any of that 99%, you know, present themselves at a, a, an agency's door, they get turned away by the fees, you know. From, from my own perspective, I want to be able to, to, to lower the cost of public relations, digital marketing services to those kind of businesses. So they can they can look beyond kind of where they're at, like right now, the, the local market. The, the, there's all these opportunities now that I think uh, it, it's time to seize upon. And we just need to broaden our thinking a little bit uh, and make things just a, a little bit more accessible so we can tell the success stories of, of Irish business. So you're having a, a tea with, yeah. your, with your 18 year old self, not a coffee. Yeah. Um, what's that one piece of advice you're offering? Yeah, well, I, I suppose as I was saying, I was probably in a, a very different place at, at the time. Um, probably just listen more, you know, uh, and don't be so don't be so afraid. I, I think w- when you're that young, you're kind of looking at you know other people's lives, even uh, as an example. And I think I was just so kind of gung ho and you know this is what I'm doing, and it's, you know, um, so kind of bullheaded about it. And yeah, I think it's just, you know, lift the head up, um, talk to people, uh, explore other avenues, you know, don't just kind of shut down uh, alternatives. You know, my career guidance teacher was trying to get me to go into business for a long time. And I was like, no, just give me the leaflet. So make a decision based on all the information. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be wise. Brilliant, James. Thank you very much for today. You've been listening to the What I Know Now podcast with Mark Kelly. To subscribe to the podcast, just enter WYKN into iTunes or any Android podcast of choice. Or check out the website at www.wykn.co. I'd love to get your feedback, either positive or negative, about the episode. What action are you going to take? I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, have an absolutely super day. Bye.